In this lecture, we're going to talk some more about nesting and mapping and show a further example of how we can take these pieces we've talked about so far, so the pieces about creating this nested data frame, and then the idea of thinking of a recipe for how we could explore things for a subset of the data. And we're going to put it together so that we can apply that recipe across all of the subsets of the data that we've created by making that nested data frame. So again, just as a review of what we were talking about in the last lecture, we can take a tidy data frame and then we can nest it so that we put pieces of it kind of like tucked in this one special column. So in this case, we're taking all of the information on sample and prevalence for each species. And in the original data frame, we've got a separate row for each combination of species, sample, and prevalence. And we're going to nest it so that all of this information on sample and prevalence for the species gets nested into this one element of one of those special list columns. And so we've got just one row per species in this nested data set. So again, we can group by the species and then we can nest from the tidy data frame to get to this nested data frame. In the code, we've tried that out right here. So we took our tidy samples, grouped by the species, and nested it. And then here's the information that we get, the output. So this was just covered in the last slide. So do go back, excuse me, the last lecture. So do go back and watch the last video if you want to follow along with the code on this to make sure that you have all of this code loaded and ready to go. All right, so here's the code. In this case, we can name this nested samples. And then when we look at it, it's got that special um, uh, list column. And then the next thing that we want to do is we want to take this data frame and we want to add on a new column where we're getting the mean prevalence from each of these little data sets that we have like tucked in that special list column. So we're going to use this, the, the recipe that we came up with before. Um, you can use pluck, but we were using pull for that in our data. Pluck is from per and pull is from dplyr, but they do something very similar. But this recipe is saying, take the data frame that's stored in one of these little slots of the list column, pluck out the prevalence column in that data frame, which again, each of these is a little data frame where we have a column for prevalence and a column for samples. So pluck out this prevalence piece and then apply mean across all of those. And then what we'll get is we will get a new list column where each of these little values will be a list with just one item, just one vector of length one that gives the mean prevalence for that particular species. So let's take a look at how to do this. We're gonna take, um, the per package, and we're going to take that recipe that we created and put it inside a mutate function. And we'll use a special function called map that lets us do the same little recipe across lots of elements. So in this case, we're saying that we want to map across this data column. And for each element in the data column, which again is just that little data frame with the sample and the prevalence for that species, we want to do this recipe. So we're, we call the element in each case dot x, and then we can put in the recipe that we would do for dot x, and then we just add a tilde at the beginning. With these map functions, there are a few different ways we can express that. We'll be focusing on the formula interface for doing that, and so that will always start with the tilde. All right, so let's go in and take a look at how we can do that. So we've just nested our data. And again, it looks like this, where we've got the species and then we've got the data. All right, let's actually name this um, nested samples, maybe. Run that, and we can take a look. All right, oh, forgot to do the nesting. There we go. All right, so we have this now where we have it nested. And we're going to use mutate to add on a new column. So just like with a regular data frame, if we want to add on a new column, we're going to do it with mutate. Um, but in this case, to get that, we're going to map and do a function where we're taking advantage of each of the pieces that are stored in this data frame. 
So let's name this mean prevalence equals, and then we'll use the map function. This comes from per, and it lets us take a certain column, and it'll go across each element of that. Um, and we'll look, there's some other types of map functions too that will let you go across lists or go across vectors or all, all of these different object types, but it's going across each element and it's going to take the little recipe that we give it and apply that to each of those elements. So we're going to map through and we already looked at how we would do this with one set. We said that we would take the data frame if it's a subset with just one species, pull out the prevalence column, and then take mean. So that's the same thing that we want to do here. We want to do it to the data column and to each element of that. And then we're going to use that tilde because we're doing this formula interface where we give it the little recipe for what we want to do. Now, the only trick here is that if we want to refer to one of these elements that we're working with, in the data from the the data column as we do our little formula here we'll do dot x to refer to that so we want to take that data frame and then we're going to want to pull the prevalence column and then last we want to take the mean of that so i can clean this up a little bit so it'll be easier for us to read and now we can run it oh. Yes, I need an extra parentheses there. All right, there we go. So we see that we have a new column right over here. We can call this um, maybe nested two for right now, just to take a peek at it. And now again, so this nested two looks like this. If we want to look and see what's inside one of these, we can again do um, that kind of extracting using uh, first the dollar sign to get that column, and then we'll do one to get the first element. So we're gonna be taking a peek at what's right here. And you can see that that gives us a single value for the prevalence. So this is the mean prevalence if we looked at this particular one. Uh, we can look at number six. This is the example that we did before. All right, so this is gonna be the sixth element in this mean prevalence column. So we're coming over and taking a look right here. And we can see that that's the same number that we got before. Now, when we're doing this, you might notice that this is still kind of in a list object. By doing the single square brackets, it's pulling it out still as a list just with one element. If we want to dig down to what's actually stored inside that, you can see that this is a double, so it's just a vector. So if we want to really pull down and get into that structure, we can do um, two square brackets around it. And so that extracts it as a vector. And we can actually check this with class. So if we run class on that, we can see it's a list when we use a single square bracket. And then when we do a double, it's actually numeric, it's a vector. So as a note too, we can use the same kind of idea. If we looked at our nested samples, again, that's before we add this new column in, we've got data right here. We could use the same idea to extract out one example here to kind of build up our formula that we wanna use. So let's try doing that. If we take nested samples and we wanna pull out just this first one, then we can do dollar sign data to extract just this column. And then we can do that double square bracket with one to pull out just the data frame right here. So we can take this and put that in the place of our dot X right here to build up and test. So if we take that and then we pull prevalence and then we do mean, we're getting the value that we expect. So this is a way that you can use, again, to help kind of build up the formula that you want to use right here by uh, taking out just one of those elements and checking to make sure it works here, and then just taking out this piece and replacing it with dot x in your map up here. All right, so now at this point, we've come through, we've added this new column. And tucked inside of each of those is this value for the mean prevalence for the species. All right, here again is the code where we were looking at that. But now the trick is like we can't really use that value while it's still nested very easily. So a lot of times we want to unnest 
to get it back to a tidy data frame where we can use our usual our usual tools. So you can use unnest to like untuck one of those columns. In the case that we have right now, where we've just got a single value in the mean column, let me go back and show a look at that. So this mean prevalence, each one of these is a vector of length one where we've just got one value. This will be very easy to unnest. We'll still just have one row per species. This will just extract it so it's not in the list anymore. So it's just a normal column. Um, if you have something with multiple things, then we might actually get more columns back again when we unnest. All right, so let's take a look again. Here's kind of a cartoon idea. This is what our data frame looks like right now, where we've got mean prevalence, but we've got it nested where each of those elements is still uh, kind of like in a list. And we want to pull it out so we've got a normal column for that. So we're going to use unnest to pull out this particular column. Um, you used to use unnest just with the name of the column, and now I think we actually need to specify a calls. A parameter inside that. So let's see. Do unnest and then calls equals and just mean prevalence. So you can see that in this case it has kept the data kind of tucked in that special list column, but we've unnested the mean prevalence. And so now we can go on and we can use this as we would a normal column. So here's the example in the code. Again, based on some changes recently in, um, in, in some of the tidyverse and, and per functions, I believe you need to have that COLS, this argument name, before your column. And then you'll get the column extracted. So if you wanted, you could do everything from pulling in the initial data all in one long pipeline. We've kind of broken it into some different pieces, but you could put it all like that. So this is using that accessor function to get out just the sample piece from the data, then changing it into a tidy data frame by converting it to a tidy frame, uh, data frame, bringing in the row names into their own column, and then pivoting to get the sample information down. Then doing the nesting and a mutate with map to take advantage of that nested data to get some information out. And then finally, unnesting. And again, with the recent change, you would want to put calls equals before the mean prevalence. All right, so far, this might not seem terribly exciting because we're really doing um, something that we could have done with group by and summarize, as I showed in the last video lecture. But the reason we're going through this process is, first of all, it's pretty simple and straightforward to think of this idea of just taking a mean of a column that exists in a data frame. But this process is really something that is much more extensible than, than the idea of using summarize. So you can really do a lot of different things um, with the, the values you have in the list column. And perhaps even more helpful, you can use functions that give you output in a lot of different formats. So with summarize, a lot of times you're really limited to things where you're going to get one output value. So for example, the mean value um, from, from each of the, the values that you group by and summarize by. But there are going to be a lot of cases where you might want to use a function where you get out more stuff. So this is an example of what we just did. And what we got out was a length one vector. So that's very easy to imagine as something unnested and it's really you know, um, pretty much the same thing, just that level of nesting. We might wanna do something though where we get out multiple values, like the number and the mean. It's hard to imagine how to do that with that group by and summarize, but it's very easy to be able to do it when you're, when you're putting your mutate output into that um, list column idea. And then you can unnest and you can extract that and get separate columns for each of those things that were returned by the process that you did with, um, with the original data to get these types of data frames. And you can also get larger data frames. So you can get ones that are quite large from the process that you do and then unnest them to get all of that information later. So it turns out it's a very flexible framework for doing a lot of things within these groupings in your data. So one example that we could look at is doing the Shapiro test. So when we do a Shapiro test and we tidy it, we don't get a single value. Instead, we're getting um, a, a one row tidy data frame. So let's take a look at doing that. 
we can go back to this example before. This is from uh, some of the earlier video lectures where we took out just the part of the original data frame that includes one bacteria species. So this has all the same values for the species, but then it has all of our different samples in the prevalence. So let's say that we wanted to get, instead of taking the mean value as we were doing here, that we wanted to run the Shapiro-Wilk test on that. So by doing pull with prevalence, we're getting out just that prevalence column as a vector. And now we can go into Shapiro, the Shapiro test. And this requires an input that is a numeric vector. So we needed to pull out that column before we could do that. But now we get this information where we have the p-value, we have the test statistic that's printed out. But if we want to, we can load the broom package. And then we can use tidy. And now we have it in a tidy format where we've got all that information as a one row tibble. So we can do the same process. We have our recipe now where we could do the same thing for all of our species. So let's take this recipe and we can come down to where we've nested the samples. So again, at this point, we have the data where we have a column for species and then the special list col column for the data. So to each of these, we wanna apply this little recipe that we came up with. So we can come down to where we map, we're mapping to the data column. And again, we're gonna start with the data and pull out the prevalence column, but now instead of mean, we're going to do the Shapiro test. And then, then we're going to use tiny to get this into a tiny format. So let's run that. If we take a look, we can again see, oh, and maybe let's do Shapiro. All right, so if we take a look now, we can see that we have this column named Shapiro. Now when we unnest, we can unnest that column. You can see that we've still got one row per species because that, that data frame that we get from doing Shapiro just has one row for each test. But now we've got it for each of our species. And we've got all those pieces of information. So we couldn't have really done this with summarize because it's giving us a collection of information rather than, than one single value. But by nesting it and applying it and now unnesting, we have all of this nice information here where we can look at it more easily. So now if we want to, we could do things like we could check and see what distribution the p-values normally have. Uh, we could use ggplot for that. We can do ggplot. Let's do that x equals p-value. And then maybe a gm histogram. We can take a look. Oh, and maybe let's do that as the log 10 of the p-value. And then take a look at that. So these are all values that are much smaller. Let's see, a log 10 of... 0.05 would be around negative 1.3. Um, these are all much, 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 much smaller than that. And of course, we're doing lots of tests that so we would expect some to be smaller. But I think this does suggest that we definitely should not assume that this is normally distributed data when we're working with the data. So that gives us some clues for how we might want to think about this in terms of what statistical test might be reasonable as we go through and look more closely at all of this data. And it's allowed us to do it not just for one species, but to go through and get those types of estimates for all of the species that we have in that original data set, which was a quite large and complex data set. So this slide shows the code for going through and again, doing that, that example of the Shapiro test and then the tidy. And again, uh, with recent changes, you should add that COLS argument right here. So this is this argument that we had. 
this is showing the output that we get for that again, where we've got these columns that were the results from running that test. And then this is an example showing how we can look and, and see the distribution of the p-values based on running that test. And this is the distribution across all the different species that we had running that test for the sample of all sample values within each of the species.